Here we're going to look at another type of polar graph, and we're going to graph it using a different approach than how we graph the rose petals. The rose petals, I had us graph the rectangular form of this equation here, and then sort of map it onto the the polar one. But here I'm going to do something a little more straightforward, which is just evaluate these. Evaluate these directly, and I'm going to use our calculator uh, for now, just so we can kind of streamline the whole evaluating process. Um, and get some answers here. So, um, now a couple of these we can do in our head, right? When theta is 0, then r equals 2 plus 2 times cosine of 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1, so it's 2 plus 2 times 1, which is 4. Pi over 2 one we can do as well, because 2 plus 2 times the cosine of pi over 2 is 2 plus 2 times 0, since the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So that's 2 plus 0, which is 2. The cosine of pi is negative 1, so 2 plus 2 times the cosine of pi is 2 plus 2 times negative 1, which is 0. And then 3 pi over 2 is the same as pi over 2 because cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, so it's 2 plus 2 times 0. And since 0 and 2 pi are the same, then those values are going to be the same. Okay, and now the others I'm going to just punch into the calculator, and I trust you can do that, but the first one would just be 2 plus 2 times cosine of pi divided by 4, which is uh, 3.414. Okay, and when I punch in... Same thing, but uh, 2 plus 2 times the cosine of 3 pi over 4, I get 0.586. And with 5 pi over 4, 0.586. And with 7 pi over 4, I get 3.414. Okay. So now let's just plot these points and look at what we see. So when theta is 0, I'm rotating 0, and I walk out 4. So there's my first point. When theta is pi over 4, I walk out 3.414. And pi over 4 is 45 degrees, so I walk out a little farther than 3. And when, pi, uh, when theta is pi over 2, I walk out 2, so I'm facing pi over 2 and walk out 2. When theta is 3 pi over 4, 135 degrees, I walk out 0.586, so about, you know, a little more than a half, which it's tough to to do here, so this point can suffice. When I walk out, when I uh, rotated pi, I walk out zero, so now I'm back at the origin. When I rotate phi pi over four, two twenty five degrees, again I walk out point five eight six. Three pi over two, I walk out two again. So I rotated three pi over two, I walk out two. Seven pi over four. 4, I walk out a little more than 3. And then at 2 pi, I'm back to 4. So if we trace, uh, trace this path, you, you have this nice heart, sort of heart looking uh, graph, and that's why they often are called cardioids. Cardioids, right? Cardioids, cardiac, comes from the, I don't know, Latin or something for heart. But uh, they look like hearts, so that's why it looks like that. Um, I think the mathematical term for them are uh, is this, lima. Lima-son or lima-con. Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I don't, 
I don't find uh, the pronunciation of that too interesting. I call them call, uh, cardioids, but they're also called li uh, limason limasons. I don't know. Um, but the more important thing is that uh, these are always uh, always going to be the result of a polar equation that has this form. Okay, anything of that form tends to look like a a, a cardioid um, or a limason. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have to go Google that or look up look it up because textbooks can't talk to you. So I didn't know how to pronounce it. Anyway, um, this is just our first example of another type of graph as opposed to our our roses. So we've got roses and hearts, which you know, too bad we couldn't have done this right by Valentine's Day. It would have been perfect. Um, but there's our first example of how to plot those how to graph those.